Good morning. I'm Fred Clark, and I'll be teaching this course on cracking the genetic code. Cracking the code was a big scientific event. It's comparable to splitting the atom, in my view. And we all need to know a little about it because it will increasingly see its effects in medicine, maybe in DNA forensics, genetically modified foods, and likely genetically modified people. The course will follow the thread of history. It affords glimpses of prodigious intellects, and in some cases, equally prodigious egos, but it's first class science. If you're like me, there'll be a few times in the proceedings when you'll say, wow, that's clever. I never would have thought of that. But I can tell you now that you won't need any math and what chemistry you need to know, we'll, I'll cover as we go along. So academically, it's not heavily burdensome. A scientific approach to the thread of, to, uh, the, uh, thread of history is how we will take how we will take this, uh, and uh, we'll begin with uh, rem reminding ourselves that there was an obscure Austrian monk by the name of Gregor Mendel, who started the whole thing rolling back, rolling back in the 1850s. And contemporaneously with him, with Mendel was Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace, who proposed a select a natural selection theory uh, that uh, we probably all heard about since high school. But the big the big casino was won by a hundred years later by Watson and Crick, who won the DNA sweepstakes with one of the great intuitive leaps in science. They pronounced DNA a double helix, a twisted ladder. Furthermore, they said, the rungs in the ladder are the key to the transmission of genetic information, and they were right. In this course, you'll find out exactly how the code works, and hard as it is to believe, each cell of an organism contains all the information needed to construct the whole organism. The next part of the story is to learn exactly how genetic information produces living tissue, a task made easier with abundant supplies of human DNA made by Kerry Mullis's polymerase chain reaction in which the DNA copies itself. Even so, learning the exact sequence of the, thir of the three billion base pairs in the human genome was a 13 year task begun by our federal government in 1980. It was a big success but it didn't come about without with a good deal of fighting and name calling. Finally, we'll look at how the, GNA, uh, the DNA genome data get used, whether by forensic laboratories, diagnosticians, or as a substitute, or substrate rather, for CRISPR, the gene cutting tool that is the subject of Jennifer Doudna's 2020 Nobel Prize. The last slide tells you what to expect from the course. Entertainment, intellectual exercise, and perhaps enough knowledge of the genetic code to dazzle your friends. It all depends, as so much does, on the choice of those friends. In any event, I look forward to Zooming with you beginning March 4th at 10 o'clock. Thank you.